Happy New Year, you guys! 2018 has been an incredibly eventful year. GE14, 1MDB being reinvestigated, out with GST and in with SST, and a huge rally just this month. This episode of Newsflash is a quick roundup of some big headlines this year and a peek into what 2019 could hold for us. When we think 2018, the first thing that comes to mind is GE14. In case you're from Green Day and only just woke up when September ended, here's what happened, real quick. With concerted efforts to vote and a high voter turnout rate, we changed governments for the first time in 61 years. Woohoo! Democracy! We now have the world's oldest serving prime minister, 93-year-old Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. But that's not the most exciting thing about having a brand new administration. Here's some of what the Pakatan Harapan government has been up to recently. Education for stateless children, stabilized petrol prices, a special cabinet committee on anti-corruption, lower broadband prices and increased internet speeds, and new PTPTN clauses. But they have also made some strange decisions. An immigration clampdown panned by CSOs, a minister giving up his seat to make way for Anwar, political leapfrogging back on the horizon, and although not all bad, the whole PTPTN thing was not exactly what was promised in their manifesto. Seven months after its big victory, the government is still far from fulfilling some 400 promises left on its manifesto. It's no doubt that these things will take time, but we'll need to be on our feet and hold them accountable for the promises made because, hey, we voted for change. Next up, 1MDB. What's been going on? In a nutshell, this state-owned investment fund that's in debt to the tune of 50 billion ringgit was brought back to the court this year. It was previously cleared of all wrongdoing under the Barisan National Administration. Thus far, it involves 10 other countries and major corporations like JP Morgan Chase & Co, Goldman Sachs, Falcon Private Bank, and many more. The fleece cash has been used to buy a luxury yacht that has been reclaimed, funnel into our XPM's private account, and even to produce a film on corporate greed. That's irony on a whole new plane. The trailblazing investment fund had its fingers dipped in many pies, and untangling the web is going to take a long time. So the investigation can be expected to go on for quite a bit. But let's hope it settles in 2019, because the sooner the investigation ends, the sooner we close the loopholes in the global financial system that paved the way for corruption in the first place. Another big story this year was the planned ratification of the International Convention Eliminating Racial Discrimination, or ICERD that was supposed to promote unity and equality among all races. However, that didn't pan out. What happened instead was this. And this. So that's not happening. But on the other hand, we still have five other UN conventions to look into. Civil and political rights, rights of migrant workers, economic, social, and cultural rights, and human rights that are poised to be ratified this first quarter of 2019. In 2018, child marriage also made headlines again. While the government has said there's a need to ban child marriage, it has also acknowledged challenges it faces. However, 2019 might see some changes to this. The government is working on some law amendments for the Law Reform Act 1976, covering marriages and divorces of non-Muslims, as well as the Islamic Family Law Act 1984, to put in place more stringent requirements to protect minors in underage marriages. The bill is planned to be tabled in Parliament mid-2019. And while the government looks into stricter laws on child marriage, it also plans to implement laws for gender equality. However, there's been no details on whether the incoming laws will also be shaped to protect all genders and sexual orientations as well. LGBT individuals are caught in the crossfire of mixed messages. Portraits of LGBT activists were removed from an exhibition by a minister, but then statements on how LGBT individuals shouldn't be discriminated at workplaces were made. When at the same time, the government declared that it will not accept homosexuality as a way of life. And to top it off, a recent public caning of LGBT individuals in Turanganu. In the face of hate crime and discrimination, these laws are in dire need. Closing off the year, more racial tensions. The Sifal Temple issue that saw violence, chaos, and resulted in the death of a public officer. 
What was actually a business disagreement gave rise to multiple unverified speculations and has blown out of proportions, further widening the racial divide between us. And let's not forget the annual You Can't Wish Non-Muslims Merry Christmas, the cherry on top of this year's racial divide cake. Still, 2018 has been a landmark year, not just in our case. The Trump and Kim summit happened. We recorded sounds from Mars, and both Brazil and Pakistan had unprecedented election victories. But it's not quite the end just yet. The refugee crisis is still ongoing. The Saudi Arabia-Yemen war is not slowing down, and there are countless other things that are going to bleed into 2019 and beyond. For us, there's clearly a lot more to work on moving forward. You're probably going to make New Year's resolutions today. On top of the usual lose weight, hit the gym more, spend more time with kids resolution. Why not also add something along the lines of be nicer to each other regardless of color and creed. <laughs> Happy New Year, guys! Hey guys, thanks so much for keeping up with all our episodes this year. We'll be taking a short break from Newsflash early January, but we'll be back mid-January. So in the meantime, let us know what your highlights were from 2018 and what you would like to see from us in the new year. Bye.